It's Patrick from AI Tutor, and I'm in Lisbon. Why? Because it's much nicer than Manchester. So, what I've got for you today is a continuation of the series that we started last year called Disgusting A-Level Maths Questions. So, what I've got for you today isn't a massive question, but it is difficult in that when you read the question, you're like, wait, what is kicking off here? You'll see what I mean. Let's have a look. A circle of radius R and center C is to be constructed. It should have two points Q and R forming a chord with midpoint M. The final required point S should lie outside of the circle and should be such that CMS is a straight line and a tangent drawn from S to the circle has length Y. Given further that the shortest distance from C to the chord QR must have length X, what is the required distance of MS? Now, if you're anything like me, you'd read that and you'd go, mate, you must be joking. What we're instead going to do, right, there's no way we're going to process all of this information at once. What we're instead going to do is try and process it bit by bit. We've clearly got geometry and, and there's going to be a diagram relevant to this scenario going on, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this thing and each time I read a sentence that I think I can add to the diagram, I'm going to stop reading, I'm going to add it to the diagram, therefore kind of cashing it in, okay? So look, circle already is how and is to be constructed. Stop reading. We can draw a circle, can't we? Here's a circle. The center of this thing is going to be C, and the radius of this thing is going to be R. Fantastic. So now that first sentence, I've cashed it in. Next sentence. It should have two points Q and R forming a chord with midpoint M. All right, let's add these things in. So I'm going to have a chord, essentially. So the two kind of ends of this chord are going to be Q and R. So I'm going to have an R here and a Q here. And we know that the midpoint of this thing is M. So midpoint of the chord, let's go blue. This is going to be M. Fantastic. I've now cashed that bit in. So you see, I'm kind of, I'm kind of breaking it down. So I only have to actually process one bit of information at once instead of this whole thing. The final required point S should lie outside the circle and should be such that CMS is a straight line. I'm not even going to finish the sentence. I'm going to stop there, right? CMS is a straight line, which means that if I was to draw a straight line from C to M and then carry it on, S is going to lie on this line, isn't it? So maybe let's make it this big. We, you know, we don't, we don't know exactly how far it is. That doesn't matter. We're just working kind of with algebraic quantities here. So, okay. C to M looks like this. And then, see, it's hard enough. There we go, We're even trying to make the diagram. Okay, let's stick S on the end of this line, right? So S is gonna be here. It then says, a tangent drawn from S to the circle has length Y. So if I was to draw a tangent from S, to the circle, it's going to have length y. And remember, if I drew a tangent here, it would have length y, and it would be the same length here. So let's just draw one going down here. So what it means is the length from s to where it hits the circle here has length y. So you can almost kind of stop it there, and then you would have this distance here as y, essentially. So this distance here would be y. Fantastic. So it's getting there, it's getting there. What else have we got now? Given further that the shortest distance from C to the chord QR must have length x. Okay, shortest distance from the center to the chord. Well, that is always gonna be the perpendicular bisector, isn't it? In other words, that is gonna be the distance from C to M. So that is gonna have length x. X is gonna be this distance here. So this kind of chunk of that green line. Okay, and we're now asked for the distance ms. So we are asked for the distance from m all the way to s. Okay, we at least kind of know what we want here. Okay, let's, let's put it, this in yellow, what we want. Okay, the hardest bit was probably getting this diagram down. We now, you know, we now need to think about how we can actually attack this problem. The first thing that I would say 
is in circles, because of all these circle theorems, right angle triangles appear very, very naturally. The most common of which is the right angle triangle that occurs when I have a radius and a tangent, because a radius is always perpendicular to a tangent. So look at what we can do here. I can draw a radius from C to this point where this tangent hits, can't I? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna draw a line, C to here. Because look, I know from the circle theorem that this is gonna be a right angle. But now look at this triangle. I've got a triangle where I know this length is Y. I know this length because it's just a radius, so that is R. And I can use Pythagoras theorem to get this whole length CS. So if I had CS squared, that's the hypotenuse, right? So that is gonna equal R squared plus Y squared. Okay, what do I now need? Well, let's think. Let's get CS, right? So CS is essentially gonna be the square root of all of this. So CS is gonna be the square root of R squared plus Y squared. And then what do I want? Well, I want this thing in yellow, don't I? Which, why don't we call it Z? Because we've already used X and Y, and that's gonna be my final answer, so Z, well, if I know that the whole line CS is this, all I need to do is take away this X now. So Z is actually gonna equal the square root of R squared plus Y squared minus X. And that is gonna be your final answer. So it wasn't actually massive. I've got three lines of maths here. The only actual maths I did was Pythagoras, right? The difficulty lies in just saying, okay, let's break this question down because 95% of the people who would get this wrong would get it wrong just because they don't even know where to start. If you know where to start and actually start getting this diagram down, the actual maths isn't too crazy. So that's the kind of vibe, right, with these disgusting questions. I don't just want to give you a million lines of algebra. Well, I might sometimes. But I want to also give you these questions that really test your understanding and problem-solving abilities. But I will leave it there for this one and I'll probably throw some mechanics at you next time. Ciao.